<laughs> All right. Welcome to Luminous Star. I want to thank everybody in advance for his or her time. Let's get on with the video. Topics of discussion. First topic, the story behind your mother and father's romance. Ooh, might be spicy. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. The power of acceptance, signs of toxicity, recognizing similar traits of romantic exes and mom, contemplating forgiveness. Let's move on. First point, there are many who have no idea of how their parents met, yet alone the story behind their attraction for one another in the first place. Should parents have any unresolved issues and or traumatic experiences with one another, unfortunately, their daughters can end up carrying this burden. Pause. All right, like I just mentioned before, while I was talking about the topics. Well, you know, some of our moms and our dads, they got together and the relationship was quite spicy. Okay, everything was probably very good in the beginning. However, the story behind how they met and what may have broke them up or why they broke up or why there was a divorce, this is where unloved daughters of narcissistic moms may really run into some issues. Many daughters are left wondering, what the heck happened? What happened between mom and dad? Is it my fault? And this person may be 30 years old right now. They may be 20, 40, you know, 50. And believe it or not, she still may carry that burden. She still may, to some degree, think and maybe even feel like it is her fault that mom and dad did not stay together. Not only that, but the unloved daughter who may have a mom who either has a clusty personality or has a narcissistic personality. The mystery behind that can really be haunting, if not downright sad, okay? She may be feeling some frustration, some anger. She may really wanna know, well, what, ha you know, what happened? What's going on? What's the story behind the story? Very often, the daughter is the one who's carrying the burdens. So what mom is not talking about, the daughter often carries the burden, okay? Because what mom is not talking about affects the daughter, especially as she's growing up. Now, certain things can change after she becomes into adulthood due to her choices. However, when it comes to the mom who is either a narcissist or has a clusty personality, Usually, she remains living in the past. Therefore, the daughter and the mother cannot currently have an adult relationship. Now, very often, the daughter ends up trying to have a relationship with her mom, but mom is still emotionally childlike. Very tough to do. Narcissists and cluster personalities tend to project their unresolved pain onto others while disassociating. The unloved daughters of narcissistic mothers is often left to attempt to figure out why and how she became the product of two people who ended up brokenhearted with a broken marriage and or home. Next point. The story behind the story of who her mother and father was or is remains a mystery to the unloved daughter of narcissistic moms all too often. This usually compounds the issues psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually. Pause, just like I was saying in the previous slides, it is the unloved daughter who is left seemingly with the burden of trying to figure out what happened in the past. This is what's ironic to me, is that even though it is the unloved daughter of the narcissistic mom, who tends to be left with the burden of trying to figure out what happened in the past, it is usually the narcissistic mom who lives in the past. So on an unconscious level, the daughter may be reaching out to her mom in the past. In order to reach her mom, she must reach into the past because currently she's not going to have her mom. It's almost like someone you may know and love and care about or you're trying to know it anyway. However, you love and care about them and you care about having a great relationship with him or her. Let's just say intuitively, 
without it being said, in other words, you know in order to reach this person or have any hopes of reaching this person, you must go to the past because currently they are not present. They're not engaged in the relationship with you presently. So intuitively or in your spirit or in your heart or in your mind's eye, you may know without it being said that in order to even reach this person, you may have to go into the past in order to do so. So unloved daughters of narcissistic moms intuitively may know this. They may know that in order to try to reach mom, well, I got to go back to the past. So I got to figure out what happened. This is the only way I'm going to reach my mom. If there's any chance of ever reaching my mom, I have to go and sift out her past, not only mine, but hers. So unfortunately, this compounds a lot of issues currently that is in the mother-daughter relationship. So this means psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually, things are not going to be so balanced. Okay, there's the tension will be there. The daughter, in a sense, has to live in the past in order to even have a relationship with her mom. And not only that, once she becomes an adult, she has to remain childlike herself because her mom is emotionally childlike. But even then, they're not having anything but a dysfunctional relationship. So even if the unloved daughter of the narcissistic mom decided to emotionally remain childlike herself in order to stay connected to mom, the relationship would be dysfunctional. Mental and or emotional illness can and often does result in narcissistic mother and father who continue to live in their past and refuse to place a traumatic and painful past to rest. Unloved daughters of narcissistic mothers carry an unspoken pain and trauma, which seems to have begun with conception. Pause. So this really runs deep. Okay, this goes way back in the past. Usually long before the daughter was born, the pain can start during conception. I know that's really deep what I just said to some of you. Some of you are just confused by what I just said. However, mental and or emotional illness usually is found in the father and the mother. Not all the time, but you can best assure that if it's the narcissistic mom we're talking about, let's just say the father is a codependent, okay? Or he's a covert narcissist. The narcissistic mom, especially if she's overt, Mental and or emotional illness will be present, more so on the emotional side than the mental. I did a couple of videos about this. Please check that out. Whereas narcissists usually are not mentally ill, they're emotionally ill. More so on the emotional, because emotional regulation is something that narcissists tend to not be able to do. Please check out that video I did on mental illness versus emotional illness, whereas it's concerning narcissists. However, when it comes to the narcissistic mother, you will find that she tends to be more emotionally ill rather than mentally ill. So where does that leave the daughter? Right. The daughter, again, once she is born, it's like she's born into trauma and pain that is left unresolved from both father and mother. But we're really talking about the narcissistic mother. During here. pregnancy, the narcissistic mom can be going through many changes and often she will be. She's not excluded from that, okay? Just like any other female who's pregnant, she's gonna be going through many changes emotionally, psychologically, and so on and so forth. Spiritually, she will be rocked so to speak, okay? So the narcissistic mom is not immune from that. By the time the daughter is born, she's already started undergoing a grooming process. See, a lot of us think that after we're born, that's when things start. No, it's during conception. So the daughter, right after conception, has already began to be groomed, believe it or not. Please do your own research. She has already been groomed to behave and think and perceive a certain way. 
So she may already begin to feel unloved while she's in her mother's womb. By the time the daughter is born, this seemingly where her sorrows begin. And this is very unfortunate because again, if the mother and or father has unresolved traumatic and painful issues, the daughter will feel the effects of that on an energetic level, a spiritual level, a psychological level, and so on and so forth. Now, some of you may be asking, well, how is that? Her brain has not been developed fully yet, or you know, during conception, that is. I understand that question, because I would be thinking that too. But you have to remember, the mother and the father coming together. Here's two people in their energy bodies, their energy fields, whatever condition they may be in, they are two humans coming together. So during conception, that's energy happening. We are all comprised of energy. So even though the daughter's body has, and brain and so on and so forth has not been fully developed, she is still part of that energy. Okay, so therefore a consciousness is there. I'm not trying to get too, too deep with this, but I think some of you already understand what I'm talking about here. So by the time the daughter is born, she's already feeling the effects of the traumatic and painful issues of her mother and father's past that go unresolved. It is during the conception that the daughter is already being groomed. Whatever mother goes through during pregnancy, the child goes through. And in this case, we're talking about the daughter. So even in her mother's womb, whatever mother is feeling and experiencing, daughter will experience and feel. So it is not far-fetched that during conception that the daughter is already sensing that there's trauma there's unease, there un there's unrest. So of course she is not able to articulate that or verbalize that because she is not developed yet in her body. I'm speaking of the daughter here. But because she is comprised of energy and there's a conscious, she is able to sense unrest, dis-ease, trauma, pain, in a past that is unresolved. All right, let's move on. Narcissistic mothers often cannot teach her daughters how to recognize and appeal to men who demonstrate stability, balance, and overall health of mind, body, and spirit. Such men are unheard of to the narcissistic mom, yet alone her daughter. Next point. It is often that the unloved daughter of a narcissistic mom has a poor view of her father as well or wishes to have a positive relationship with him. What mom doesn't know, she cannot teach her children. By the time her daughter grows into adulthood, signs of dysfunctional behavior are usually very clear. Drug abuse, alcoholism, promiscuity, and poor choices in romantic partners are already the norm. By the time the daughter actually is an adolescent, okay, signs of dysfunctional behavior are usually already clear. But what the mom doesn't know no, she cannot teach her children. So the unloved daughter, again, is left with a lot of mystery and a lot of questions unanswered, which can compound her in a spiritual and an emotional way, and even psychologically. So the unloved daughter of the narcissistic mom usually has a poor view of her father and men in general. Now, when it comes to her father, the unloved daughter usually would like to have a relationship with her father if the father is absent. If the father is around, this still can be the case because the father can be physically around but emotionally unavailable because the father, if he is still with the narcissistic mom, he may be one who behaves codependently. So he may tend to be passive. So physically he's there, but emotionally he is not available. So the unloved daughter is left longing and desiring her father. As far as like men in general are concerned, for the narcissistic mom, she usually views men as those that she can use. 
all right, whether it's financially, sexually, or, or whatever. So she's going to pass on that type of mentality to her daughter. So her daughter's view of men more than likely would be very poor. Now, the daughter, as she grows up, she may tend to shift her views of men. This is very possible. Some people may not agree, but it is possible. The daughter is not an exact carbon copy of her mom. She does have a mind of her own. She does have her own spirit, her soul, so on and so forth. They say that the apple usually doesn't fall too far from the tree. All right. In some cases, that's true, but in some cases, that is not true. For instance, there are some people that you may know of that they don't act anything like the mom or the dad. They may favor the mom or the dad. They may even look a lot like them. But when it comes to their character, their personality, their spirit, I mean, just the way that they carry themselves, you really cannot see too many traces of the mom or dad. Some of you know somebody like Some this. of you know that those individuals, they did some shadow work. In other words, that person dug deep and they have vowed that they're not going to be like mom or dad because they had a poor role model in mom and dad. So this is the same thing with the daughter who may be unloved by the narcissistic mom. She may have awakened and said, you know what? I don't like what mom has taught me. So I'm going to go a different way or I'm going to interrupt the dysfunctional behavior pattern. There's too much evidence around us that absolutely proves this. Not everybody turns out to be exactly like their mom and dad. So the narcissistic mother teaches her daughter actually to not only hate men, but to hate her father, especially if the narcissistic mom is no longer with the father romantically. Even if she is, she may be using the father who may remain to be her spouse. She may be using him financially or in other ways. And the daughter may see this. So by the time the daughter becomes an adult, she may either follow her mom's footsteps or she will turn from it. It can go either way. Unloved daughters of narcissistic mothers often have certain traits of romantic partners which appeal to her due to being groomed to become attracted to as well as to appeal to individuals who have a predatory nature like her mother who has either a cluspy personality or a narcissistic personality. Spiritually, it is her narcissistic mom who introduced her to her first romantic partner due to the grooming process, which took place at conception and while she was in her mother's womb. Pause. So yes, the narcissistic mom has a lot of influence over the unloved daughter when it comes to romantic partners as she is growing up. So by the time the daughter is ready to pick and choose romantic partners, what's familiar to her? Well, unfortunately, the traits of her mom is very familiar to her. So that's what she's going to look for, just like the rest of us. We look for what's familiar in our romantic partners. So if mom or dad was a narcissist or a close to personality, guess what? We're going to be looking for that in our partners, but it will be unconsciously. So I want to suggest to everyone watching the video to research the subconscious, you know, it is the mind. subconscious mind that can explain why we tend to make certain decisions and why we tend to be attracted to certain places, people, and things. Unloved daughters of narcissistic moms, unfortunately, they are not influenced in a very good way. However, when it comes to them picking their romantic partners, it is very often that the romantic partners, especially the first one, will have a lot of traits like the narcissistic mom. If her father is also a narcissist, this will also be the case, but we're focused on the narcissistic moms right now. So the unloved daughters will seek what's familiar in her romantic partners. And unfortunately, these partners will tend to have the same traits as her mother, who is either a cluster personality 
or has a narcissistic personality. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that, yes, during conception and then after birth, even on into her childhood, she was groomed by her narcissistic mom. Next point. It is not unusual for the unloved daughters of narcissistic mothers to find that she has previous generations of women who not only have been romantically involved with those who have a predatory nature and who have continued the dysfunctional family legacy, but are unloved daughters as well. There are many unloved daughters of narcissistic mothers who continue to awaken in order to break this dysfunctional family legacy once and for all. So the unloved daughter will either follow the footsteps of her narcissistic mom and pass on the dysfunctional family legacy, or she will interrupt the dysfunctional behavior pattern, therefore not passing on the dysfunctional family legacy. And often that will be because she can clearly see during her adulthood, maybe even during her adolescence, that, wow, not only mom, but a lot of my grandmothers carried on this dysfunctional family legacy. They passed it on. So this is why I'm going through a lot of what I'm going through. The unloved daughters may awaken to this, and I'm happy to say it seems like more and more unloved daughters of narcissistic moms are waking up to this fact. The unloved daughters, some will continue to awaken to the fact that this has been going on for generations, this passing on the dysfunctional family legacy thing has been going on for quite some time. So she has broken or interrupted the dysfunctional behavior pattern. Did she plan it? Most likely she didn't, okay? So the unloved daughters, they usually don't plan to interrupt the pattern. It just unfolds that way. You may have four generations of women who did the same thing. Their behavior patterns were quite similar, such as becoming involved with men who may have a predatory nature and who may also have alcoholism and drug abuse issues. So you have four women who have done the same thing or similar, four generations of this. The fifth female in that generation who was born, well, She's not going that same route. So sometimes we find this in generations of family. When we study family history, we find this sometime. Whereas during certain generations, certain behavior patterns are not available. Certain behavior patterns have been interrupted, such as alcoholism and drug abuse and so many other things that we can think of right now that tear families apart. However, it skips generations sometimes. Certain things that seem to be a generational curse, so to speak, it skips generations from time to time. So maybe with this particular unloved daughter of a narcissistic mom, yes, the interruption has occurred. Okay, let's move on. Signs of toxicity within the mother-daughter relationship. First sign. Expressions of animosity in a passive aggressive manner, such as heated arguments, fist fights, instigating tension where there isn't any tension. They just got to start something, right? Okay, next sign character assassination and smear campaigns. Third sign triangulation. This is where, as the narcissistic mom triangulates, you know, she brings in a flying monkey or an enabler to triangulate with the daughter. This is another way to keep the daughter in a very unhealthy and dysfunctional relationship. I know this sounds disgusting, but there are many narcissistic moms who will do this in order to keep hold of the daughter, okay? They will use triangulation. This is very effective, by the way. It may sound pretty sick, I hesitate to say this, but it's true. It's often quite effective because the daughter, she is usually very hesitant to say goodbye to particular family members when it becomes very clear to her that that may be what she has to do in order to thrive forward and in order to heal. So triangulation, unfortunately, may seem quite 
disgusting, but it is often very effective. And the daughter sometimes remain locked in a very dysfunctional relationship because mom, who is a narcissist or a cultural personality, has the idea of, well, she's not going to lose source supply. So if her daughter doesn't want to deal with her directly, well, she will get to her daughter in other ways via other family members, even her own spouse if the daughter is married. Gaslighting is another technique that narcissistic moms love to use when it comes to their daughters. Getting the daughter to trust her more than trusting herself. So gaslighting is a very frightening technique to the daughter because the daughter doesn't know which way she's going. She doesn't know uh, whether she's coming or going. She doesn't know right from left. And this is emotionally and psychologically. So spiritually, the daughter tends to be very drained after the triangulation and gaslighting has occurred. Now, these two often go hand in hand when it comes to the narcissistic mom. During the triangulation tactic, the mother absolutely does not want the daughter to trust herself because the daughter's instincts and her intuition will tell her to say goodbye to certain family members. The daughter will usually go against it, though, because we're talking about family here. Ironically, because the daughter has the compassion, okay, she has the empathy and the sympathy, she has the intuitiveness to see how other people in her family are in pain. The mother will use that against the daughter. So as long as the daughter continues to be a person who has the compassion, the empathy, the sympathy, and she's able to nourish others, she's able to see the good in others, she's able to um, have relationships, whereas she is able to provide support to others. You see where I'm going with this? The daughter's ability and compassion to be loving caring and nourishing will be used against her by her own mother. So voila, triangulation and gaslighting, full in effect. Because on one hand, the daughter will continue to have relationships, if not with her mom, certainly with other family members. So the mom again will triangulate. On the other hand, she will doubt, okay? She will be in an emotional wreck the daughter will be energetically drained because she's going to be flip-flopping back and forth. Should I? Should I not? I don't want to come off a bad person, but you know what? I'm suffering here. I may have to break free. See, the, the daughter will be seemingly double-minded when what's really going on is that she's struggling internally because on one hand, the daughter knows she must fight for her own life. On the other that's her family that she loves. What is actually going on is that the daughter is having inner conflict and the mother is capitalizing off of it. The mother is using it to her own advantage. She would like the daughter to continue to be in inner conflict because as long as the daughter is in inner conflict, okay, this is where the gaslighting is. The daughter will seem to be double-minded, emotionally unstable, and she will continue to doubt her own inner voice and intuition, which is telling her to get out, to save her own life, to interrupt the dysfunctional behavior pattern. So she can absolutely not only uplift herself, but ironically help a lot of people in her family who knows intuitively that there needs to be a change. They may not do it, but intuitively they may sense that a change needs to happen. The daughter, however, has what it takes to do it. So as long as she has that inner conflict, the mother will continue to capitalize off that. So again, triangulation and gaslighting usually are two tactics that the narcissistic mom likes to use against her daughter. Again, it sounds pretty sick and disgusting, but it's often quite the case. Last sign, sabotaging any changes 
of daughter becoming romantically involved by creating various shenanigans. That one is pretty self-explanatory. A lot of narcissistic moms don't want to see their daughters happy. Again, that sounds disgusting, but just think about it for a minute. A lot of narcissistic moms view romantic partners as people to be used for source supply. The daughter doesn't see it the same way, and the mother knows it. So she will sabotage any chances of the daughter having healthy relationships. And this doesn't exclude the romantic ones. She's going to have her nose poked in every romantic relationship that the daughter has. And she will sabotage all of them by creating various shenanigans, such as telling the romantic partner something awful about the daughter. Now, if it's, a, if it's true or not, is irrelevant to the mom. The mom will say some of the most terrible things about her daughter. This is where the character assassination and smear campaign will come in as well. So she will tell the daughter's partner, romantic partner, anything that makes her look bad. She will tell the daughter's romantic partner anything to plant any doubt in his or her head about the daughter. So the mother, again, this may sound disgusting. The mother wants the daughter for herself because this is a lifelong source supply. If the daughter continues to awaken and thrive and move forward and heal, the mother is left starving and there are other things that may follow that may not be so pretty for the mom. Let's move forward. Similar traits of narcissistic mom and romantic exes, gaslighting, devaluation, emotionally manipulative, chronic deception or lying compulsively, triangulation. Usually romantic exes and narcissistic moms are both unremorseful or all of them are unremorseful. They all seem to be unforgiving and all of them seem to live in the past. So all of these similar traits here of narcissistic moms and romantic exes of unloved daughters are sometimes quite eerie when you look at it. However, it's quite common. First tool, remember that all family members do not resonate with one another just because they belong to the same family tree or roots. Second tool, keep a journal of your experiences and then write the epilogue to your story. The way you started is not the way you have to continue. Third tool, continue to work your support base while focusing on your priorities. Last tool, invest in all relationships on your own terms. Pause, the last tool, invest in all of your relationships on your own terms, especially now that you are an adult. This may not be easy to do, but it's usually going to be quite the game changer. You can invest. You can choose to invest in any relationship you would like and do it on your own terms. In other words, you don't have to continue to ask permission. Some of us have been groomed to behave codependently and to please others, therefore place other people's needs and desires before our own. That goes right into this last tool. Usually, we do not invest. <laughs> people who are codependents or people pleasers, they don't invest in relationships on their own terms. They're usually led by somebody else in the relationship. Think about it. They're usually led just like a little child or a little girl. Because now, you know, we're talking about unloved daughters here of narcissistic moms. So she remains childlike. The unloved daughter emotionally remains childlike if she doesn't interrupt the dysfunctional behavior pattern. If she's going to invest in relationships, usually she is led just like a little girl. So I like to encourage, especially my stars, to invest in all of your relationships now on your own terms. Okay, you don't have to be led by somebody else. You can work with somebody else because <laughs> that's what partnerships are about. Key word is partner. That means you're teaming up with somebody. You're growing together. But those unloved daughters who remain emotionally childlike, they don't grow with people in their relationships. 
They're usually led by people in their relationships. Third tool, continue to work your support base. Absolutely. So if you are working your support base, more than likely you are learning tools to help you to focus on your priorities. Not only to focus on your priorities, but to get some priorities. Because again, some unloved daughters remain emotionally childlike because they usually see themselves as little girls. So they don't have a lot of priorities in life or their priorities are not very straight at all. So continue to work your support base while focusing on your priorities. Second tool, keep a journal. Absolutely. This way you can see how much progress you've made in your healing. You can see what's going on with you rather than trying to please the narcissistic mom. This will help you to stay focused. And not only that, you can begin to write the epilogue to your story. So how you started out is not how you have to finish. You don't really have to finish at all. You can continue with thriving forward and making choices and having relationships on your own terms, living your life to the fullest on your own terms. First tool, remember that all family members do not resonate with one another just because they have the same family tree or roots. Absolutely. Everybody in the family does not resonate with one another. When you think about it, a lot of us have childhood relationships with family members, childhood relationships. A lot of our family members, we were introduced to them when we were children, were we not? So now that we are adults, some of those childhood relationships, you guessed it, has to end in order for us to thrive forward, in order for us to focus on our own healing. When it comes to unloved daughters of narcissistic moms, this is one of the most frightening things to the narcissistic mom, is that her daughter will actually do what I just described. Grow up as an adult, say goodbye to certain family members because those family members were a part of our childhood relationships. We are no longer children. So you know what? Those particular family members we have to say goodbye to, not because we don't love them, not because they are not possibly great memories that we continue to cherish, not because we're not putting any respect on our family lineage, absolutely not. No, it is because we are now adults. We are no longer having dysfunctional relationships from our childhoods. And some of those family members, well, we had a dysfunctional relationship. It was a childhood relationship. However, it was dysfunctional. But now as adults, we have come to know we have outgrown that. So one of the most nightmarish things that can occur to a narcissistic mom is that her daughter grows up and realizes this. Signs of dysfunctional relationship. Signs of a dysfunctional relationship, pardon me. <laughs> okay, feelings of anxiety, unresolved issues and avoided relationship challenges, mismanaged and misplaced anger, silent treatments, resistance to making personal changes and breaking traditions, which promotes personal growth, denial of trauma, abuse, betrayal, and abandonment. Last sign, idealization of narcissists and or cluster personality and unhealthy relationships. These are signs of a dysfunctional relationship. However, when it comes to the unloved daughters, sometimes all of these signs are overlooked. Why is that? Because she's too busy focusing on how to please her narcissistic mom. Okay? She's sacrificing herself in the process. So all of these signs may be obvious to onlookers or someone who is on the outside looking in. For the unloved daughter of a narcissistic mom, however, these signs will not be very clear. Not until she, number one, either leaves or ends the dysfunctional relationship with her mom, okay, then these signs will become very clear to her as time goes on. Or she, or she is faced with a challenge that absolutely jolts her awake. So to onlookers or someone who's on the outside looking in, these signs of a dysfunctional relationship 
probably going to be quite clear if they care enough to see this. So when the unloved daughter begins to awaken, sometimes she's awakened due to something happening that is so unforgivable to her or so traumatic to her or so painful to her that she sees her narcissistic mom for who she really is. Sometimes the daughter begins to see the dysfunctional signs of the relationship when she moves forward, when she's no longer having an active dysfunctional relationship with her mom, who's a narcissist or cluster personality. So she can begin to see things a little bit more clearly now because she's not spending a lot of time with mom anymore. She's not calling, she's not texting, she's not on social media, so on and so on. So now she can begin to see things a little bit more clearly. Let's move forward. Critical questions. What is your purpose in life? Knowing that your life has purpose is a huge step to realizing what your mission in life is or what your purpose in life is. Second question. Are you knowledgeable or aware of what vibration that you currently function on? Many unloved daughters continue to vibrate on the same vibration since her birth. This vibration suggests that she is unlovable, therefore undesirable by not only her own mother, but all men as well as all people. Third question, do you continue to expect and or desire validation from your mother, your father, any of your romantic exes? What does the history of relationships with these individuals reveal to you about yourself? I know the last question is a loaded question, so we'll start with that one. So you may question whether or not these particular individuals, such as your mom, your father, or any of your exes, have ever loved you. So when you look at the history of the relationships, what does that reveal about you? How did you handle the fact that these individuals didn't seem to validate you? How did you cope and deal? So this is what I mean by asking the question, what does the history of those relationships reveal about you? How did you handle it? You're here today. How did you thrive forward? How is it that you're continuing to thrive forward? Because you had a hand in it. Believe it or not. Second question, are you knowledgeable or aware of what vibration that you are currently functioning on? So basically, there's a vibration. We're all functioning from a higher vibrational frequency or a lower vibrational frequency. And this is all due to our personal choices. So are you aware of what vibration you're functioning on right now? Are you still walking around feeling like and thinking that you are a person who doesn't deserve to be loved? That's a vibration. Where does that come from? Did you have that since your childhood? It's possible that you had it while you were in your mom's womb because your mom felt and thought that she was unloved or she didn't deserve to be loved or whatever was going on with her that was keeping her in emotional turmoil. You were affected by that, even in the womb. So is it possible that you're still functioning on that vibration? A lot of us are unaware of the vibration we're functioning on. First question, what is your purpose in life? Well, the first step of that is to know the fact that you're breathing, you're living, you're here. You count. You're a part of the human collective. So, as far as like you're having a purpose in life, there you go. You're alive. Your life has purpose. So that's the first step. And number one thing to answering, what is your purpose in life? Well, I'm alive. <laughs> you can say, I'm writing the epilogue to my story. Yeah, I was dealt a bad hand, you may say, at first. But I'm not going to finish that way. I'm not going to continue that way. I don't have to continue to believe and think and feel that I don't deserve anything in life or I don't deserve to have a prosperous life or an abundant life. Realize that your life has purpose. I would suggest starting there. <laughs> all right, having said all that, I wanna thank everybody for joining me today or tonight, wherever you may be. I certainly hope you're treating yourself very well. 
I'm Luminous Star, and I wish you the very best. Stay tuned for more videos.